I'm joined by Middlebury College. They just won the 2023 NCAA Division III Women's Lacrosse National Championship. We have with us head coach Kate Livesey, and she is flanked by Hope Shu, Jane Early, and Erica Barr. Coach, I'm open with comments from you about today's game, the second straight national championship for Middlebury. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty exciting. Um, it was a great game. I think it, it really played to our style this year of being dominant on the draw and being really hard to stop offensively. Just, you know, a lot of shots on cage. I thought their goalie played really, really well. Um, but we, we did a nice job of putting them under pressure. Um, and I thought our defense played really great, really, really nice game, especially that, like, the first three quarters. Um, the shifts were on point. They were really collapsing to the ball cleanly. Um, and just making it really hard for them to see clean shots. So, you know, I just feel like we were strong in every area that we wanted to be today, um, and it just kind of resulted in a, in a really strong performance for us. So, yeah, I mean, they took my nerves away. We do get nervous for games, and, uh, and I think just going into a game like today, this is a team that's really special, and um, it see, felt to me like this was the only way this should end, um, but we had to go put it together in a way that felt true to, to who this team is. And I'm just so pleased that we were able to do that today because they deserve this. Um, they're a truly fantastic team. Well, it's not just a team that's special, it's a program that's special. And for some context, and I'll have you an ask this, answer this one first, four titles in eight years now, seven seasons because of COVID, so I didn't play that one, but a fifth for you having collected one at Trinity as well. Talk about program, but also the buy-in to your system to continue it on. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to say other than I just have players that believe in what we're doing and they, you know, we talked last night about, you know, someone like Erica Barr who just, you know, exudes Middlebury lacrosse in every way and how she welcomes people into the program. Jane, as well as a senior captain, just I think the leadership from the top down, um, it just sets the tone and it makes people want to work when you feel accepted and welcomed and included and challenged. Um, you want to play and put everything on the line for your teammates and I think they achieve that in their leadership and it just sort of perpetuates it. It's just a special thing when you hear them talk about each other and how much they mean to each other, what they've done for each other. Um, you can see that commitment to the team on a day like today. Cool. Monica? <clears throat> Erica, the numbers speak for themselves. Five ground balls, seven calls, turnovers. We saw Gettysburg, aggressive offense, high risk, high reward passes, hard charging towards the goal. What were you guys preparing for from the scout? What were you seeing on the defensive end, and how were you able to be so disruptive? Yeah, yeah, and Gettysburg has a ton of great attackers who we scouted heavily, um, and we're not, you know, this team isn't unfamiliar to us. We played them last year, a lot of the same players, um, and uh, the defenders we gathered last night after we had a team meeting, we just kind of went over our individual goals and everything that we wanted to do as a group, uh, and I think we really followed that game plan. We practiced certain sets that we knew that they would be in, and we were able to execute it really well. Hope we talked a lot about you today. We kept using the word unstoppable because it <laughs> felt like you kept finding those lanes and pathways to goal. Can you talk about what you were seeing on the offensive end and how you were able to create some of those lanes just to find your shots? Yeah, we've definitely spent a lot of time in practice this whole season about setting up our dodges. Well, one of our offensive coaches, Amy Patton, is just constantly on me about really moving in, setting up a good lane. And I think that today, especially in a man defense, like they were playing a lot of the time with Jane in a face guard, um, it just gave us a lot of good room to be able to execute that well. One of the like most open I've been able to get through the middle in, in the whole season just because of all the space that was um, given to me by the rest of my team. Mr. Cox? Yeah, I, uh, Ms. Barr, um, nice to meet you, Ray Cox. Um, nice to meet you. I, yeah, I, it, I follow up from the previous question. I mean, y'all played exceptional defense that year. I think they were held to something like maybe close to seven points below their, or seven goals below their, their average for the, for the year. Um, what, to, what was particularly effective in, in getting, you know, what was a high-powered team coming in here slowed down like that? Yeah, yeah, so 
We have some people who cover the cutters in the middle, and they did a really great job executing there. Also, our backer, <laughs> yeah, Maddie Paler, number 31 in the middle, as well as Kylie Wilson, who's our backer, number 19. And she really does so much of the work, and a lot of times it goes unseen. She is the reason why people like myself and those around me are able to be aggressive and pester the people who are out on the outside because she's there ready to take them in case they get by. Was, uh, you know, you all played exceptional defense all, all season. How did this game uh, compare to the rest of the season? Was this a typical average, better than average? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think we played better than average, though the score um, definitely reflects uh, goals against that is greater than our average. I think we really locked it down in ways that we discussed before the game. Um, yeah, and, and you know, I continue what you were talking about with, uh, you know, not only were you getting open for shots, you were getting open for some, for some nice passes and setting up other players. Talk a little bit about about how that was working offensively for you. Yeah, I think I was just able to get into a pretty good flow today. Again, like I said, there was just so much good ball movement all around today. I think one thing that I was really proud of our team was, was just not feeling apprehensive out there. I really felt like from the start, we were really moving the ball and had our heads up. Um, in some games this season, we've come out and it's we've definitely felt a little scared. And I think even on a big stage like today, we were able to really come out and play confidently and you know I kind of feel like I can feed off of other people's confidence um, and that really you know feeding off everybody else's confidence gave me the um, confidence to really look and make passes and take drives that sometimes I might you know fan off of and make a pass so I think it was just an all-around great execution by seven people. So you're putting me on, right? You've been scared of somebody this year? <laughs> <laughs> Not scared. <laughs> Just, you know, sometimes I'm a, I can be a little bit less confident towards the net, so I feel like I wasn't able to. Jane, Jane, talk about the draw. You won the first one today, but Caroline was 12. Yeah. 12 draws. Talk about the importance of just the factor of the draw itself, but her effort as well. Yeah, I mean, I love Caroline Adams. I think working with her all year on the draw, I've learned a ton. Um, she's like a true draw taker, and I think this year, I'm not, actually. <laughs> I didn't start taking it until last year, and so having her on there, um, one is just a different look. Like, I set up completely differently than she does, and so it's really nice to, if I'm not winning them, really easily be able to turn to the coaches and be like, oh, like, I know that this setup will work for Caroline. And I think she doesn't play like a freshman at all, especially in that draw circle, um, and brings such like a positivity to that space that I really appreciate. And I, all season, can't say enough about the entire draw team. It's a group that gets a lot of extra reps and has to be out a lot more than everyone else. And she's always out there. Mackenzie Smith is always out there, Skylar Locke. Um, and they make it fun for me even when you might be in a rut with it. So mm -hmm. I think our whole team really is to credit for that. Monica? Coach, um, if, if memory serves, when you played Gettysburg last year, Nikki Mile had a pretty <laughs> big game. Yeah. And then today she comes out, she's a little quiet on Friday, today yeah. she comes out and scores three goals. Is there just something yeah. with Nikki when she squares up against <laughs> Gettysburg that well, she really brings What it? you need to know about Nikki is she's a gamer. Mm -hmm. So when the moment's big, Nikki's ready to go. And she shoots really differently than a lot of our other attackers. So I think against this goalie, she was a good matchup. Um, and you, yeah, you got to see the flair that is Nikki in that um, that goal before the half. I mean, she's always dialed in. She's kind of a, a quiet operator, but she's always paying attention and looking for her looks. And she's got a quiet confidence about her. And so she was ready to step up, um, you know, when attention was other places. So I was really, really proud of her. And, and yeah, she's a gamer. She knows how to get it done under pressure. <clears throat> I'll ask one more if I'm, yep. if I'm allowed. Oh, yeah. I also wanted to ask you about Jamie Newman because it seems like you just put her into the game and she mm -hmm. scores a goal. What is it about Jamie Newman and her offensive efficiency? Yeah, I mean, Jamie's super quick. She's a real threat to Cage. And, you know, she's still a sophomore, still kind of finding her way. But, uh, but we have a lot of confidence in her as a coaching staff, and her teammates have a ton of confidence in her. Um, and, and she just knows how to get in there, and she's also a different – 
shooter um, than I think some of our other Dodgers from the top. So it was just a nice chance to mix it up on when maybe we were getting a little stale in our attack. Jamie's going to go do something different, and, and she did it. And we're just like, take her, Jamie, take her. Um, and we were just really happy to see her find the back of the net. It was really wonderful to see Emma, in a way, come in as a senior and kind of finish the game on such a high for us with that 17th goal. Um, I think that, again, just speaks to the depth um, and commitment of everyone on this team. Um, so that was really special um, all the way around. Jane, you've been here, you've done that before. Talk a little bit about the evolution of your role from freshman and then those that you learned from to now you getting to play that role. Yeah, totally. I mean, as a freshman, you kind of are just along for the ride. I don't even really, I mean, my freshman year was five years ago now, so I don't, <laughs> right? or, I don't really remember it so much. Um, but I think this year, um, when you're kind of behind the scenes putting together how a lot of practices go, how time on the bus goes, who making sure we have snacks, I think mm -hmm. the role really changes to looking out for the people around you. I think my freshman year, like my job was just to get to cage, and now my job is not just to get to cage, but to make sure everyone's on the same page out there and everyone feels comfortable. And it's a really rewarding job, and I really loved it this year, um, and it's, I mean, it wasn't easy because we had years off in between too, so I, it wasn't really a straightforward trajectory to get there. So there was definitely a little catch up to be played, but kind of investing in the leaders I've had before me and kind of, I mean, I still, I texted them today. Um, and really just investing in their knowledge has made it really easy. I'm glad you said snacks. You can't underrate the importance <laughs> of snacks, right? Dane, go ahead. And you know, I'm just gonna touch on what you just said and I'm gonna go across the table. So for Jane, Erica, and Hope, I'm going to start with you. Talk about the leadership now as you transition out of your Middlebury career for Jane and Erica, and then how you, 28 games in a row, you know, continue the winning streak, continue the forward momentum. Jane and Erica, talk about your legacy, and then Hope and uh, Coach about how you can carry it on next year. Yeah, I mean, I think Erica and I really like to win. Um, <laughs> I will say that. Um, but I think in terms of leadership, just um, kind of the way Millbury Lacrosse operates is that we don't take any practice for granted. We don't take any practice off. And I think sometimes I forget that some teams get out there and they might just kind of, you know, go through the motions. I don't think I've ever been to a Middlebury Lacrosse practice where we go through the motions. And I think that comes from leaders and leaders who are willing to. I mean, I'm 23. I could get out there and jog around and be like, I'm old. Um, but that's not the way we operate. And so I think that is leadership that I'm glad I have left um, for everyone else. Proof you like to win. So Tyler, <laughs> yeah. it's already up there. <laughs> now Erica? Yeah, I mean, going off that, Jane touched on liking to win. I think that's, I can also agree that's something we really love to do in our time here. Um, but you know, now that we are kind of leaving this team behind, definitely leaving it in good hands, I, I just hope that we showed the team how to have a lot of fun while working hard too. Um, and I told KP this, I, I've only had three seasons here, that's as many as I'll ever have. Um, and while I'll always wish I had four seasons, I don't think any number would ever feel like enough. I just hope that the legacy that we leave is that, you know, just enjoy every single second and have so much fun because these are our best friends and these are the memories that I'll have for the rest of my life. Yeah, I mean, first of all, just playing with Jane and Erica and all of our other seniors, but specifically these two has been such a just honor and joy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jane is like the best player I've ever played with on attack. I've learned so much from her. So much of what I'm able to do is because of all the attention that she draws. But just beyond that, you know, the conversations we have, how much confidence she gave me my freshman year, you know, when Jane really told me that I was good, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and then just watching Erica, um, I want to be out there playing defense with her. She just is such an amazing human being to watch play lacrosse. You can just literally see her giving everything that she has in every second she's out there. Um, and I just know that these two are going to be fully in Middlebury every single pre-game speech for the rest of our time. <laughs> and thinking about these two, really. I mean, the heart that they have and the love that they have for lacrosse is unlike anything. And I just think, you know, I still have two more years here, um, which is awesome. And I just think it's great to have this momentum going, but just 
I mean, you can't ask for two better leaders to, you know, teach you how to be a leader one day when I'm their age. So, um, Co Coach, you get the last words here. So in answering Dane's question, Gus, about your team a little bit and what you see down the road. Well, I, I had a little moment yesterday sitting flanked by Jane and Hope, two record-setting attackers for Middlebury. Um, how lucky am I? Um, and, and what a season to see two um, just premier attackers um, work together um, and work with their teammates today. Um, Jane was a supporting role for the offense, and she was happy to do that, whatever it takes. Um, and it just, you know, I can't say enough about um, what fun it has been to have the dual threat of Jane and Hope together. And, and um, to see that on display today was, was exciting. And then Erica leading our defense. I mean, I, I work a lot with the defense. And, um, you know, I just, she plays it the way I wish I could. <laughs> She's feisty. Uh, it's, it's a... You know, she just unites a group, and that's like, if if you have seven people and a goalie working in tandem, you can't stop it. So, it's a team. I don't know. I'm a little lost for words right now, but um, you know, they'll go down as just one of the most dominant teams I've ever coached, um, top to bottom, every position, everybody on the bench. Um, you know, there's so many good players who actually weren't even on the field today. So I look forward to their day. Um, to show all their hard work and their impact. Um, but it's a really proud moment for me to see a team that I was pretty sure could do this, um, to see them here now and everything they've put into getting here and, and making this a reality just feels really rewarding and, and really special. Well, Coach Jane, Erica, and Hope, on behalf of the City of Salem, the Old Dominion Athletic Conference of Roanoke College, and in honor of your teammates, congratulations on being the 2023 national champion. Thank you. Thank you.